Hey, it's Joe Glines from Automator. And yesterday we had a really great little tutorial on intro to GUIs with AutoHotKey in version two. Version two, the GUIs are much different. So we're creating a course, which I'll give you the link right here. You can purchase it and get a really good discount. But this next 15 minutes or so was taken from one of our live Friday calls where we just help people. And one of the, he happened to be a hero member, but he asked if we could give him a quick tutorial on how to create GUIs in V2. So Isaiah's off the top of you know, his head, cranked through this amazing little tutorial. I think it's, so I went and extracted it because this is just really awesome. But um, again, if you're trying to learn AutoHotKey and learn especially version two with the GUIs, take a look at this course or we have other courses as well, but uh, you get a good discount. Thank you. Have a great time. Bye. One is trying to learn GUIs on V2. I never learned GUIs. You know, I just dabbled in them in V1. And then in V2, there's great examples of really powerful code, but it, you have to go through advanced topics to learn the basics of the GUI. And I get squirrel, dog, butterfly on learning the basics in V2 uh, for GUI. So I didn't know if it, there was a, any good examples or learning path, that kind of thing. I can definitely give you kind of like a five minute crash course on the basic of how to create a simple GUI and the idea of how to react to things on things. So it wouldn't be like too deep, but it gets you kind of like a start. And from there, I can tell you where to go to get more information because I can before give you, you some examples. Before you do, so let me, one is the, the URL over my head. We just launched the intro to auto hockey in version two right now. That doesn't cover right. GUIs at all. Um, but just FYI, we just got that out. And the next course, I was talking to Jace about it yesterday. We were going to do the intermediate course, but then we thought, you know what? The V1 mm -hmm. to V2, the major changes, GUIs are like drastically different. So he said, why don't we work on that course next? So right. in, I'd say three weeks, we should have an intro to GUIs course um, in version two. So right. just FYI. Um, and and that would be wonderful. That's yeah. Great. But the yeah, and I'd still say do the demo. Well, he can do a demo now. I just, okay. just wanted to let you and everyone know that like we actually are working on a GUIs course in version two asking us for the link and i'm like i don't even want to sell the version one course one. Yeah. It's, yeah because it's going to change so much yeah. right so what i'm going to do let me just share my screen for a bit and it's kind of like a five minute introduction that gives you at least started and let me also open up where you're gonna go so guis in v2 are objects so if you have already played a little bit with objects, it's going to be very familiar to you. If you haven't, don't worry, it's very simple. But the GUI's objects is divided in two big objects. One is the GUI object itself that contains many controls. And the second object is the control object. Each control has its own object that behaves differently. That's the main idea behind it, right? So. When you're searching on the on the help file, if you look for GUI, you will see here that it says GUI object. And in here, you have information about how to create a GUI and everything. But the main part that you want to check is the GUI object. This is the one that tells you what are the actions that you can do with the GUI. You can add it, destroy it, get the position, hide it, maximize it. This is what controls the GUI. The other one is, again, as I mentioned, the control, so control uh, object. So let me see, hold on, GUI control object. This is the one that you're looking for. The GUI control object instead, whenever you refer to a button, for example, then this other object is the one that you get. I'm gonna show you how you get it. And when you get that, these are the actions that you can do with a control. So you have to get familiarized with those two of course, I'm not going to talk about all that right now, but for the controls, the most important part is the properties of the controls because it tells you if the control is enabled, if it is focused, the name of the control, the value, and this is the one that you will see very often, the value. I'm going to grab either the text or the value.
those two things separately, let me show you a quick piece of code um, that creates a GUI. The main thing is, whenever you create an object, you have to store it in a variable. The variable can be named any anything you want. I usually go with what the GUI does. So the main GUI of the application, I usually call it main, and I create a GUI object. That's how you do it in V2. Now, creating the GUI itself doesn't do anything. Now you have to add controls to it, and then you would go main add. Now this function takes three parameters. The first parameter is what the type of the control that you're gonna add, some options for the control, and the default value of the control. That's basically what you do. Um, so let's add a button that is 75 pixels wide, and the name of the, bonds, the button is the cancel button, right? That's the idea behind it. And as I mentioned, every time you add a control like this, it returns a control object that you can store in a variable. So I could call my variable cancel button. That's the name of my variable. And I'm, whenever I add the control, that returns a control object. So this is a GUI object. This is a control object. This second part is optional. You don't have to save it if you don't want to. But certain situations, if you want to check if the control was disabled or not, then you would have to get the object and check whether the object is visible, for example, or if it is enabled. So those are the properties that I was mentioning. But you have to get the object first, right? Now, in this case, I'm not going to store it because I don't need it. After I create my GUI, then the last step is showing the GUI right there. Now, when you show the GUI, you can select how big or tall your GUI is going to be. If you don't do that, it automatically calculates the size for you. Right now, if I don't specify any sizes, it will just go ahead and show a GUI with a button with the size of the GUI being that to accommodate for the, that one button. That's the basics of it. So if I want to add more things, then I would just copy this guy and the type of thing that I want to add is a list view, for example, and I want that to be 300 pixels wide and I don't know, 20 rows for a list view. What I have to specify instead of text is the columns and that is going in an array. Later on, when you read about those a little bit more, you can get more information. Let's say name, last name. I'm just going to put those two. And let's add the list view first and the button second. Now I show it. Um, this is just because I don't have the single instance. It's just telling me that the script is already running. I say yes. And now I have a list view with a button. You see how easy it is to create a GUI? It's not that hard. After you get the types of controls that you can add, you just add them one after the other. You can position them. Like for example, I want an OK button. So let's get an OK button right in front of this one. But the cancel button, I don't want it below the other one. So at the bottom, you see that they are showing both one above the other. I want to show them horizontally. Then I would just tell it, OK, I want my cancel button to be to the right of my OK button. So this is the OK, this is the cancel. And this just says, add it to the right. I can put some pixels here, 25 pixels, 10 pixels, it doesn't matter. But the M is kind of like the default pixels for the margin. That's what it means. So X plus M says, put it to the right, the margin amount of pixels. It doesn't matter what that is. I could set that up late, uh, before or after. I don't doesn't really matter. And now I have the buttons one after the other. That's it. That's the main concept of building the GUIs. The problem is, hey, I want to react to the GUI. And in V1 and V2, there's a big of a difference there. That's the second big difference of GUIs because in V1, GUIs are not objects. So that's the first difference. The second difference would be how you react to actions. As this is an object, remember that I told you that I can save this into my OK button object. Now the object has a method called on event, right? And that tells, I, I can tell the button to react to certain things, whether I click it, whether I close the GUI, where, 
there are certain events. There's a list of events. I'm going to link to that too. I'm going to send all these links on the chat. So you have that. So if you look for the on event um, part of the documentation, you will have a list of events that you can target. Not all the controls get all the events. So for example, you cannot click on a list view for, well, you can. Um, let me see. If you click on it, it tells you which controls accepted. So if it is not one of these controls, you cannot capture that message. Does that make sense? No. So you can have a button and when you click the button, you can react. Well, what we're going to say is on the event that I click on this button, let me call a function. So this in the one was the label that you would call or the function. Here, you just specify the name of the function. You can create whatever name you want. So I say, show okay message. That's the name of my function. Now that I referred to it, I have to create it. So whatever you want on your code, you just create a function that performs the action that you want. But be careful. Whenever you click, there are some parameters being sent to this thing that you have to mention. For the click, when you click here, when I check on the click event, it sends three parameters. It sends the object that was clicked, the information that depends on the object, and if it was a link, it would have a third parameter called age reference. I at least have to mention these two. It could be any name. I could. I usually just copy paste them or I have a hot, a hot string that does that, I could name them the object and the info, that's it. But if I don't care about them, like I'm not gonna be checking on the info and I know that the object is this button, then I don't need them. Then you can just put an asterisk there to indicate ignore them, right? I usually for these type of things, just use the asterisk. Most of the times I don't need to see which button click what, so I don't care. Now, in this case, I just perform my actions. So let's say message box, you clicked the OK button, and that's it. So you have to react to the event. That's it. As this is an object, this is one of the interesting things about objects. You don't have to save everything into a variable. You can string the actions one after the other by using the dot notation. So this here, I could concatenate it right here, and I don't need to save the variable any longer. I could have the whole thing in one line. Does that make sense? So I create the button, and that gives me an object, and that object, I'm gonna call the on event on it right away. So I can do the whole thing in one line. That's one of the good things about this. As I run this code, what is gonna happen is that if I click the okay button, I'm gonna get a message box. Does that make sense? Yeah, and that's, right. yeah, that's it. So basically, those are the things that th that gets you started. And again, if I want the cancel button, I could use the on event. This time, I'm not going to show the OK message, maybe the cancel message. So cancel. And this one, I do the same thing. I don't care about parameters. Now, all my actions. In this case, I'm going to just copy this, make it there, and cancel. So I don't know if you have any questions regarding this. How would you close the window? When, if you cancel the button, if you wanted to actually do the same as X, close the window. Yeah, you can either. So you Rather can than message either, box, you change that to a. To exit app or hide. So let's say that I just Not exit want, the app, but actually close it GUI, destroy the right. GUI. Destroy it. You can use. Now, the, remember that we created an object here. And as yeah. I mentioned, each GUI object has, got, has some methods on it. So things, if you want to act on that window, one of them is the destroy method. So what I have to do is grab the main object, which is the main GUI, and then use the destroy. That's it. That's all you have to do. Now, And the destroy function, it's, it looks like a function. Is, is there any parameters method, right? that go in there? No, no, no. Uh, so okay. if you click on it, it would tell you if it needs parameters. It doesn't. Okay, that was so in this awesome. Case, Thank you for that. It's given me a heads up without having to. Uh, you you very simply and succinctly demonstrated the the basics. Um, right, which is lovely. Um, it is not that difficult. 
the in so the differences of what you would do in v1 is just that you're not going to be using the dot notation mm. and that instead of using the on event you would use a g label yes that's it so but what I'm saying is you've you just saved idea, me right? hours of research. Thank you. Right. Now, the only thing that I will do, so let me go ahead and grab the links. So I'll give you the GUI object, right? Mm -hmm. So the GUI object, the GUI help file, the GUI control object, the events, and the GUI types. So these are all the types of at, uh, controls that you can create. Each of them has different parameters, things that you can do with them. So mm -hmm. if you want a hotkey or a date time calendar here, just mm -hmm. take a look at this thing, take a look at the parameters that it takes mm -hmm. and then how to use it. Usually the help, the, the documentation is really, really good at doing uh, like, uh, it gives you very clear instructions but you will have to kind of like read a little bit to get yourself up to speed. So I sent you on the chat <laughs> or just go to the hero group, <laughs> ask your questions, and we'll be more than happy to help you on that too. When I was learning, I just said, okay, how do I get that looking like I want it? Okay, I got it looking like I want it. How do I make it react like I want it? If you mm -hmm. learn in chunks, if you don't mm -hmm. have to learn everything at once, it is easier for you to grasp. Well, you so thanks again for watching that video. If you're interested in the course, I'll put the URL up here. It's got a good discount. It's a solid course. And uh, we highly recommend working with version two in the GUIs because they're much simpler than the GUIs built into version one. Cheers.